Where is little Harmony Montgomery? What happened to her? These are questions that have remained unanswered for more than four years in Manchester, New Hampshire. Harmony's parents were not together, and she lived with her father, Adam, and her stepmother, Kayla. Sometime in the fall of 2019, Harmony vanished, but no one said anything. There was no call to police. There was no alert. There was no search. Just a little girl missing and no one looking for her. That changed in late 2021 when her mother reported her missing. The search was intense, the investigation exhaustive, but the results not complete. Harmony was never found, but her father Adam was charged with her murder. He's on trial now for that murder and we're learning a lot more about Harmony's tragic life from the testimony of witnesses, including her stepmother, Kayla. But there are still unanswered questions lingering about the accused murderer, Adam Montgomery. Why won't he appear in court? Why won't he reveal where Harmony is? Why would he beat his wife? And why would he ever bring harm to this little angel? Tonight, we'll bring in our experts to answer these questions as we continue our investigation into what happened to Harmony. I'm Vinny Politan. Thank you so much for joining us. As we talk about little Harmony Montgomery, this is a trial. A trial is a search for the truth. When you find the truth, you get justice. And she deserves justice. She went through so much in that short, short life that she had, that at the end of the day, don't we all owe her justice? for her story to be told. And, and that's what's happening inside the courtroom. Prosecutors um, are doing a really good job of laying out the facts. I, I, you know, the defense is doing what they're doing, but I don't, I don't know. Uh, you know, I, <laughs> the evidence is what it is, folks. You're seeing it, I'm seeing it, the world is seeing it, and, and perhaps it will lead to justice for little harmony. Now, let's talk about Adam Montgomery, because this is, this is an interesting part of this case, because right before things started, it was clear that he's not contesting the cover-up of what happened here, okay? The cover-up. So this isn't a case where Adam Montgomery and his attorneys are going to jump up and, well, he's not even showing up, but are not, not going to jump up and down and say, uh, no, he didn't do this. He didn't carry the bag over there, or she wasn't brought over here, over there. The, the cover-up seems to, to a certain extent, be conceded. And, and, and the reason being, because it's about who actually killed Harmony. How did Harmony die? And he's absolutely contesting that, claims he's innocent. But he's not really contesting everything that's happening afterwards. So what he is doing, though, is saying that she did it. Kayla did it. She's the one who committed this crime of taking the life of his daughter. And then he is the one trying to, I guess, with her, cover it up for two years and try to hide evidence and hide uh, the victim, little harmony from everyone. So that leads me to, to one big question I have. If, if, if it's really about who killed her, and you're saying, I didn't do it, I wouldn't do that to my own daughter, then why is he not telling us where she is? If you're conceding the rest, then just reveal where she is. And then whatever still exists of her remains can get a proper burial and try to have her soul rest in peace. Because it seems he's always, you know, he's the dad, I'm the father, I, would, I wouldn't kill my daughter. I didn't do that. I'll admit to all these other things. Gun charges, yeah, that was me. But not the murder. And, 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 and beneath that you say, well, he would never murder his daughter. Well then, why not allow her to rest in peace? Why is he not revealing that piece of information? Why not? 
We're going to talk about that tonight. We have a lot to get to, but let's begin with all the ladies from the courtroom. Court TV crime and justice correspondent Matt Johnson was in the courtroom all day today, just like yesterday, and has all the big moments for us. Um, great to see you tonight, Matt. Let's begin with Adam Montgomery, and as this is all unfolding, uh, back in 2019, how he's covering his tracks. What, what is the evidence? What was coming out in court relative to that part of the case? Vinny, nice to see you as well on this Friday. And as we're wrapping up week two, the jury really hearing more details about that alleged cover-up. And the night that Kayla Montgomery claims that Adam left in a U-Haul van with Harmony's remains and did not return with them. Well, we're also hearing about that night from other people, including Travis Beach, who was there, along with Kayla Montgomery, and another person by the name of Brittany Baird, all there on your screen. Today we heard Travis's, Travis's turn of events of what happened that night. Take a listen. When he contacted you and asked you to rent him a U-Haul, uh, what did you do? I didn't, I didn't hesitate. Um, he's a friend. Um, I wasn't thinking of anything negative. Um, I was at his apartment. I saw everything packed up. Um, I put one and one together, thought it was two, but it wasn't. What did you do when you returned to the Econo Lodge? We did drugs at the at the Econo Lodge. When you say we did drugs, yes, who is the we that you're referring to? Myself, Brittany Bedard, Adam, and Kayla Montgomery. And what drugs are you referring to? What, what kind of drugs? Cocaine. Is that crack cocaine? Yes, sir. Adam. Montgomery and myself went outside to smoke a cigarette. He was pacing back and forth. He, he said he effed up, and I asked him what he meant, and all he could say and repeat was he effed up. The jury also hearing about another alleged cover-up, Vinny, in the terms of getting rid of cell phones at Walmart. This was in December of 2021. You can see surveillance video that the jury saw with Adam, Kayla, and Kelsey Small. Now, this came after Kayla called Adam to come back to Manchester after police had contacted her. And then the jury also saw video of that interaction in December 2021 with Adam Montgomery when he was sleeping in the car with his girlfriend and police knock on the door wanting to know questions about where is your daughter Harmony and he wasn't, he, he didn't cooperate whatsoever. But what's interesting about this piece of evidence is that it was silent when it was played in court because of a pre-trial ruling where um, they agreed or the judge ruled that uh, audio would not be played for the jury. It's, it's unreal. We're talking two years later here, right? And he's still living in a car. Still living in a car. Only this time, he's not with his other children. He's with his, his new uh, girlfriend from Maine, who subsequently has tragically passed away. Um, let's talk now about Kayla Montgomery. Again, he's pointing the finger at her. She's a big witness for the prosecution. Um, but testimony and evidence about her being scared, about her being abused. Right. Remember, Kayla Montgomery says that Adam is the one that killed uh, Little Harmony, and she was too frightened to do anything about it to stop the abuse and to go to police any sooner. So today we were hearing yet again from maybe a third witness that took the stand today, very reluctantly, that was talking about seeing black eyes and abuse. And this particular witness, Nicole Giles, so she was scheduled to testify last week and a few days ago. She wasn't responding. She wasn't uh, coming here to the courthouse. So they issued a warrant for her arrest. And uh, she told the judge that she was worried for her safety. So we are blurring her face. But here's what she told the jury. Did you ever see Kayla Montgomery with bruises on her? Yes. Okay. W where were the bruises that you saw? Pretty much all over her face, her abdomen, um, her arms, her legs. How often did you see them on her? Um, pretty, pretty often. And pretty often, 
how often is that? Um, I don't want to put words in your mouth. So there was like a new one pretty much every day. More testimony that really supports what we've already heard, including from Rose Smith, who I interviewed yesterday, who was telling us about how Adam was in a tug of war with her with her phone when she was trying to get Kayla help. And she also noticed that uh, her eyes were so badly beaten that they were swelling shut. Vinny. Again, that's extremely powerful information. These are independent witnesses, not Kayla Montgomery, but independent witnesses reluctantly um, also coming into court to describe what they saw. It's painting a clear picture here. Now, one of the things that always frustrated me about this case was, so this is a family, and I know they're a family in transition, a family with problems, but you know, there's a little girl. And then at some point, there isn't a little girl, and no one, like no one's picking up on it. But it seems that Adam was, was lying about what had happened to Harmony. Yeah, he was trying to cover it up, according to the state. So um, we were hearing more about his lies after Harmony was out of the picture, after she was brutally murdered. And we were hearing about um, the lies that he was telling people that Harmony was now staying with, with her mother, Crystal Sori, in Massachusetts. At one point, he mentioned having a daughter, but it was, it was very quickly and brushed off. You say very quickly and brushed off. Uh, what do you mean by brushed off? Um, he kind of like, he just changed the subject as fast as he could. He never um, specified a name. Um, he had mentioned that he had um, two boys and a daughter, and but he had dropped the daughter off at, his, at her mother's in Mass somewhere and just kind of changed the subject as fast as possible. What did he say about Harmony? Uh, just that he had a daughter named Harmony and that he hadn't seen her in a couple of years because his, her mother took her back to Massachusetts. And that mother was in the courtroom again today, Vinny. She's been here most days of this trial. Adam Montgomery has not. But I did speak with Crystal Sori in passing. She's not doing any interviews right now. She doesn't want to jeopardize the case. She's waited a long time for justice for her daughter. Uh, she told me today her strength came from pink heart earrings that um, she said that her daughter would have loved so much and they were her daughter's um, birthstone. So that's what she wore to court today. Now, to me, it's a little bit clearer now. So people who are around Adam Montgomery and Kayla Montgomery, if they're asking about Harmony, oh, her mother, her mother has her and she's in Massachusetts. So it's another state, she's with her mother. And people probably who were around Adam Montgomery understand the type of guy he is. He's not going to go out of his way to see his daughter if he doesn't have uh, custody at that time. So they could sort of accept that explanation. At least people in his circle could accept that, that lie uh, or explanation without further questioning it. I, I kind of understand that now. Okay, so we're getting, I think we're getting closer to the end of this trial. Um, I want to know what's coming up. And I'm hearing that there's some potential mystery witness in this case. That's how I'm categorizing it, Vinny, because uh, this was obviously out of the presence of the jury. Uh, Judge Amy Messer was asking for an update on the schedule before she, um, you know, we head into next week after the holiday weekend. And what uh, the attorneys were talking about was this potential witness that is not on any of the witness lists. It's someone that had been watching coverage of the trial, called the Harmony Montgomery tip line, and then that was so credible that uh, Manchester police interviewed this person. And now, this weekend, the attorneys are going to review that video uh, of that interview, and they're going to decide whether or not that this person's going to be put on the stand. Now you have the defense team, they were already ready to fight this because they say, well, you know, there is no rule of sequestration if this is someone that's already been watching the trial. Um, so there's potentially that. I heard that there is going to be another transport, so there's probably another inmate that's going to take the stand on Tuesday when testimony resumes. And this trial, the state's case in chief, could wrap up as early as Wednesday or Thursday. And then the big question, Mr. No-Show for his trial so far that wanted to prove his innocence, will he take the stand, Vinny? Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> I would say he has nothing to lose based upon the way the case has progressed here, but 
that'll be his decision. Could, could you imagine that, though? You don't, you're not there for the whole trial, then you show up at the end to testify? We'll see. I, I wouldn't put it past him. I would not put it past him. Matt Johnson in uh, Manchester, New Hampshire tonight. Great reporting as always. Thank you, sir. Have a great holiday weekend.